Yo, 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 guys, what is up? Welcome back to another episode of Marijuana Say Weekly, and I'm going to jump straight into today's uh, podcast, and we're doing a bit of a DIY, a bit of a tutorial, or like not a DIY, but a bit of an explainer video uh, is showing you guys exactly what you need for a 0,8 by 0,8 uh, indoor grow system. Uh, we're going to break it down piece by piece, and basically this should hopefully help you guys pick out all the ingredients that you would need for your system. Uh, and I'm going to jump into the share. And of course, Dean's here as always to guide us with this uh, today. Yeah, Dina, I mean, where do you want to start with it? Like, where do you envision us starting off with this? I always say to clients, there's three things that are important to a grow tent. And the first one is this guy over here, your grow space. Like either if it's mm -hmm. going to be obviously like, obviously we're talking about tents now, but like your space is definitely the most important thing. Uh, when you're uh, when you're doing a grow, you know, I mean, without the space or a, a solid space, you're going to have problems like light leak and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, people barging into it or, or, you know, multiple different issues. So I always think that the space is is definitely the, the most important. And then after space, there's there's two environmentals, which sort of uh, form sort of the uh, I would say the uh, sort of base of, of any successful grow. Mm -hmm. Uh, number one being the sun <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> over here, shining I bright. Wanna, I just want to jump in. You guys can also access this via the link in the description. Um, you guys won't be able to move it around like we can, but you'll be able to view it in retrospect, uh, in, in, in the future and just like move some, so, uh, like have a look at it, uh, after the fact, but anyway, yeah, sorry. You were talking about the sun. Yeah. That's a nice light. And this is also specific. We have a lot of this stuff available on the store. So you can also check that. There will be some links below. And this is a like a recommended setup, right? So like this would be the 240 watt uh, King Bright that suit like that would fit perfectly in this 0, 0,8 by 0, 0,8 tent. Yeah, and you'd maximize it completely with this. Mm, you know, you'd mm. be able to pull massive yields for very small amount of space. And, uh, you know, uh, personally, the, the King Brighton, and from what I've seen, I mean, I, I actually saw uh, some uh, one on, on Facebook on one of the grow groups. They did uh, 1,440 watts of King Bright 240s, and they pulled 1.8 kilos off that, oh. you know. So it's showing that that's more than a gram a watt. So yeah, really, yeah. really, it's honestly my favorite light. Uh, the yeah, no, it's a banger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like, <laughs> I really like grow light. <laughs> 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 all right so, so we got the light we got the tent uh let's have a look obviously i think something like this uh like a, a little supplement while we while we're on the lighting thing i've made it a bit smaller because it's maybe not as as critical but it is critical but it is critical that. technically though because uh, yeah, like yeah, like yeah. what i say to clients is who try to do it themselves like plants like consistency so if you don't mm. have a, a robot turning your light on and off it's never going to be successful you need that you need that robot, you know, yeah, so this is a, a timer a, and a light. Electronic you, timer, yeah. Yeah, if you don't have a timer, you need a timer for, for mm. a grow, you know. And there so, are cheaper uh, ones. This is usually going to set you back like 300 bucks, uh, like $15 sort of range. You can get one for maybe like five-ish dollars, but I don't really like the analog ones. They're a bit confusing. Um, yeah, and like in South Africa specifically, we deal with uh, the intermittent uh, uh, power cuts. Yeah. So like the 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 timer as seen the electronic timer will keep your chart will keep your time whereas mm -hmm. a manual would mess out so it's like then it becomes manual you know if you're away for the weekend and there's a load shedding cut you're gonna lose your you're gonna lose your time yeah um yeah. obviously unless you have uh, you have something like uh, like this over here our inverter battery system which is <laughs> you know which is uh, I'd say for our international viewers maybe. I mean, it's I'll probably maybe necessary, but oh, like, sorry, how often sorry. are you? <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. How, how often are you getting like load shedding in America? I don't think ever. You know, yeah, so this like is a, uh... <laughs> this is going to be basically for it's like a, a power system for when the power runs out. Uh, you just run it, connects to your wall, it self charges. There's big batteries in that bottom piece, and like you know, as soon as the second the power cuts, the thing on the top will know the power's off. It'll turn it on, and Bob's your uncle. Um, this um, yeah, and... we, we don't stock at the moment. And you you need to run like with 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 that you you know it would keep your at least your environmentals going and just sort of going back to to our essentials. There's one other sort of main essential that I always suggest. Uh, well, that you need because like plants need fresh air. So like there's this guy over here. 
the, the, the inline fan. What's nice about using a tent is you technically only need one inline fan because you'd use it as your exit. And then uh, either the tent uh, sort of seals and it would get a negative pressure running into yeah, the tent. Yeah. So you run this as your exit. Uh, you run the, the fan as your exit. And then you basically technically now have recreated what's happening outside. You've got light and you've got, uh, and you've got uh, air movement and you've got a grow space. And as, that as long as you've got a nice filtered, minimum. just a nice filtered intake, uh, but like something you can do with that, just with the, with the ducting is like, um, with the inline is like, obviously you need the ducting, which is that like silver tube stuff guys. Uh, and that's going to run, uh, I would maybe put, depending on, I suppose you could, you might need to run a little bit like coming out of, out of the thing like that. <laughs> 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 or uh, I would have an intake, another, the, these OAs have multiple, they have two holes. Uh, I would have your intake hole, which is usually, I think, at the bottom. Um, and that I would have some ducting running out, then I'd cover that with a bit of a sock filter stocking type thing, just to keep it. Yeah, I always out. suggest to clients, get the long one, uh, like a long ducting, and then cut it into pieces, three pieces. Mm -hmm. One piece to go before the inline fan, one piece to go after the inline fan, and then the third piece to go into your entrance at the bottom. And then yeah. obviously you don't don't like put your your one piece of ducting blasting onto the other piece of ducting. Try and like separate the where they are at, you know. Yeah. And hot yeah. air does rise, so having your your exit at the top and your intake at the bottom makes technical technical yeah. sense. And then just with vents, uh, what about this guy? Yeah. So. <clears throat> with uh, the, the the air movement is going to get you your parameters going but you do need to then strengthen up that plant you know outside you have wind uh, and wind will blow and when the, when the wind blows it's going to increase your st uh, stem strength and allow that plant to be hardier so if you have no wind blowing around inside the grow space you're actually going to get smaller yields because your plant is not going to have strong stems in order to hold strong uh, heavy buds you know as soon as it starts to as soon as it starts to bud, it's going to just like flop over because it's so weak. So if you don't have any air movement inside the space, you're actually going to negatively affect your yield because your plants are going to be weak. Mm. And uh, this this is also like they can be opportunities for like because your intakes your your inline fan is going to create like a steady stream of airflow through your tent like this, but like the oscillating fan is going to move like this, and it's going to be able to like any dead spots of air, you know, like this like hot stagnant air that's sitting there. You just want to move that into your inlines uh, path, and then it'll get sucked out and taken care yeah. of. Um, I suppose that's the other aspect too, you know, mm. mold and dead spots and and stuff yeah. like that in the it's, airflow can be caused well mold less can be caused by dead in, spots less prevalent maybe in the size of the tent right i mean, I mean it's uh, for a dead spot of air in a 0 0.8 but it's like on your front it's it's for a smaller tent like that it's much more important for the growth and the simulation uh yeah you know, strengthening yeah. the plant uh it's something we maybe overlooked with your you know with your light uh you need one of these guys just a hanging kit or rope yeah. ratchets um uh, always a good or good product you know you can use a piece of rope and tie it off as well but like having the ability to click it up each time and slowly move your light and or bring it down where necessary you know all of those are Im important aspects mm -hmm. so it's definitely a product which uh, you you <clears throat> you often see uh, if if uh, someone's taking a light they are taking a hanging kit or a rope ratchet mm -hmm. what's cool about the king bright 240 specifically uh, is it actually comes with its own rope ratchets which is quite cool yes, um, if you guys go for this know, light then this would become a might need an essential, uh, might need not necessarily an essential. So we'll put that. But if you went for a light there. without it, obviously Makes, then yeah. it's an essential. Yeah. yeah. So it's either or. Okay. So now moving on to uh, something, I, I mean, I don't really like, yeah, parts, I suppose it is essential, but depending on what type, these are like more fancy fabric based parts, uh, reusable fabric. Um, you could go for, I would, I mean, in these cases, I think they, they I try to get like, you can't see the size, but they, I think these were 37 liters, but we also have like a 30 liter, which would be fine with uh, plant matter, freedom farms, uh, freedom parts. There's like a bulk bunch of different types, but you could also get a slightly cheaper option um, of just like, like plastic, plastic parts yeah. from wherever. Yeah, nursery bags or plastic parts. Mm. And, you know, with a tent size, uh, the 08, like you, you also want to then look at uh, how many plants you want to do. If you're wanting to mm. do one plant you go i'd go for like a 30 or a 50 but if yeah. you're wanting to do like uh multiple plants then you're obviously going to go for a smaller size and do yeah. and do smaller smaller plants more high density kind of 
kind of crop. Um, I also just want to quickly on 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 that point before we move more into the growing, I I would also just put this here as an essential, the hygrometer. Yeah, like yeah. basic data is important, and the two basic data parameters is your humidity and your temperatures. Because if you don't know those, uh, you're not going to be able to. You you you're just shooting in the in the in the yeah. dark. Yeah. So uh, what's cool about the you know the this specific hygrometer, it's super cheap. Uh, mm. It gives you a max and a min, and it gives you a current, and you can reset your max and your min daily, and then you can start to record data in a book or on a whiteboard or something like that. So you know, just having your data uh, is highly important, and you can get data for cheap. You know, it's cheaper than the it's cheaper than the timer. This is so like, like one hundred and fifty bucks at the moment. I think it's it's like seven dollar fifty. It's it's next to nothing. Um, so yeah, it's definitely definitely an addition that's essential. Uh, 100% agreed. Uh, with data and stuff like that, and you were talking about like shooting in the dark and whatnot, uh, I think something like this, the pH, uh, I'm going to put it down here. It's still essential, but I'm going to put some of the newts and stuff together. Uh, pH, yeah, you're going to be wanting to check your, your watering, uh, whatever you're watering, whether you're doing a newt feed or whether you're just watering, you want to be checking your pH. And like pH differs, like if we say we don't need to check because like our pH in Cape Town is a specific balance, uh, it might not be the same, like literally in from uh, Somerset West to maybe like even Gordon's Bay is close or Worcester. It's like it's different water supplies, you know, like they're going to have slightly different variances in the pH. Uh, but so you're even going to need to, and it, it changes over time, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, generally my pH is 100% fine. Uh, but then on the odd occasion I tested and I'm like, yo, this is some weird, weird dodge. Yeah. So it's still, it is still important to, to test regularly, even if you are normally fine. Like I generally know mine's fine. So if it's, I'm in a rush, I'll wing it, but mm. I still like to test, uh, as regularly as possible, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, and like, so then I, for example, some people are getting like very high or very low, you know, and, uh, and, the, and also then also your nutrients and putting stuff into water will obviously adjust your pH. So then it's important to be testing uh, yeah. as well. Brilliant. Uh, with feeding schedules and such, I think I'm going to pop these guys in. Uh, you can give a little bit of explanation on these two guys. Yeah. So, I mean, we basically gave two very basic nutrients here. We've given one high nitrogen uh, uh, grow nutrient and one high phosphorus potassium uh, flowering nutrient. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we, when you're trying to achieve sort of uh, bigger yields, you can, I mean, a lot of the craft soils is specifically the, you know, like the craft soils that we offer are packed with nutrients, but if you're wanting to enter into, so they, they will generally be fine. But, uh, you know, if you're wanting to pump, pump it a bit harder, the two basic nut, you will need two basic nutrients mm -hmm. at least. And we really like the Umia range. Um, it's a semi-organic, uh, powder-based range and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it's locally made. So that's, super yeah, it's really something well, weird. Like yeah, super sub cheap work. Sub bucks, sub hundred bucks sometimes. Yeah, I went through a load of them that summer season. Yeah. To be honest, yeah. uh, but and it's like lost. High... <laughs> like it's 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 unhydrated, so it's you know it's powder based. Uh, you know, when you add water, it goes it goes a long way. Uh, just because it's like in you know powder is a good form factor for shipping nutrients and moving them around. So yeah, those are critical. But then like these other sort of. Uh, I think, I mean, you obviously want to put your wedding agents as a critical, right? Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> I didn't used to be the biggest sprayer back in the D, but like now uh, as a as someone who's dealt with like multiple problems over multiple years, my IPM is highly important. And, you know, uh, uh, this specific product, the wetting agent, is an mm. insecticidal soap. Um, I even did a test this past weekend where I actually did the test of using of spraying water onto a plant without wetting agent and with wetting agent to do the test. And what I actually noticed afterwards is, you know, the the it achieved, it did its wetting, but then it also like the leaf was clean. You know, the one leaf mm. where the wetting agent on was clean and the other one wasn't. So like it's just uh, something that your plant seems to eat up and build resilience and and help grow. And, uh, you know, some of the other, the, the insecticide and the fungicide, you could potentially, if your parameters are really good, you could potentially put those as uh, might need recommended. But I would I definitely say. say that every grower needs to own a bottle of wetting agent. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I've, uh, we came into contact with it maybe a year and a half ago, and I've, I've since not, I, I have since not then look <laughs> not looked back, and I've sprayed it every single week uh, in, mm -hmm. in, my, in my grow. 
Yeah, I'm, just, I'm gonna pop these uh, on your recommendation the insecticide. Like you might need these uh, if you develop like, like you know, if any, these are the Margaret Roberts uh, insecticide. I think there's a Margaret Roberts organic insecticide as well. Uh, like no, a, that uh, is the organic one. Is that that is organic. Like they a, both no, the they're both fully box. organic. Uh, mm. They both made from like vegetable oils and uh both, you know, garlics and stuff like that yeah too. they have yeah. very strong smells um and you know they they you might need a slash recommended but like if you are going to get very serious and you're doing a bit more scale and you have more plants then you can sort of you know keep a daily eye on then it would become an essential something only you time, would need a spray. yeah only time we wouldn't recommend recommend like these down here is like if you're really on a budget um like you really you know you really want to just wait a couple like you might not yeah you could probably one month get this stuff at the top and then the next month just get a couple like supplement with uh, you know stuff from here yeah uh, like before you go into flower i'd say they're essentials but in veg you know like hmm. you could you could maybe push it's a few a good it. few weeks yeah so get the top first and then get the, the everything else below and then as soon as load shedding hits, you'll be buying the inverter battery. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, I got this, this guy, MacGyver here, growing medium. Uh, there's a couple of options. You can obviously choose between uh, Freedom Farm Classic Craft, uh, the August Oil Lux is a, uh, what's that one up in Joburg? The Living Organics. Oh, Organics Soil. Matters. Organics Matters, which is also really, really uh, good. Um, yeah, this is, you're going to need a, a medium. Look, this is a more on the pricier side, but it, it's designed for the job. Whereas like a lot of the stuff at the, at the garden center is going to be, uh, like cheaper, but not necessarily geared. It's like more geared for bulk, just throwing on the lawn. Uh, you yeah. Know, what I often more. see, what uh, I often see with beginner growers using like garden, garden supply, potting soils and stuff like that is they hold a lot of moisture and you often get over watering or damping or mm, for seedlings mm. dying, you know? So going for a as a as a noob or as a newbie going for like a specific craft soil it can help you avoid some of those sort of early issues uh uh 100%. from what i've noticed yeah just it's for the money it's like it's worth it 100 percent. like it makes and you can reuse sense. them yeah you can go yeah. watch our videos about the or oh, andy's videos about the uh about that he did with mike from kaya farms with the soil analysis mm. and you can see that they're actually like can go the distance you know um, I suppose the, the, okay, Jiffy pellet, uh, and seeds, I mean, the seeds, seeds are definitely it's, essential. Yeah, essential. <laughs> gonna... Can't grow ganja without ganja seeds. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put, uh, I mean, I suppose in this case, yeah, I'm going to say it's essential, even if it wasn't like in this case, it's premium seeds. Um, and I, I'm still going to uh, reiterate that, like, if you guys are going to spend all of this money on like this equipment. Like just put that last 500 bucks into a good pack of seeds in the last, in the last mile, you know, like don't spend this and then go and grow a bag seed and get two males in your tiny little space. Your electricity bill is going to be through the roof and now it's for nothing. Um, so yeah, I would, I would strongly recommend, uh, getting a seed. Do you recommend like a, you know, if someone's growing it, like a, I mean, I would probably say just get a normal photo, a feminized photo for the, for the tent. I mean, you could go auto, right? Uh, I, I, yeah, for an, if you're new, I'd say go for a femme, a femme yeah. photo, uh, and you've got, because you mm. are, they're, they're just a little bit more resilient in the early stages, but, yeah. uh, uh, I would potentially turn that grow tent on its side and put autos in it then, you know, yeah, but like, yeah. uh. Yeah, but like I'm an advocate more so for fems, uh, yeah, proto fems yeah. uh, than autos. But I mean, both will work. It just depends on what kind of you want to you want to do and what you're interested in. You know, hundred percent. Yeah, guys. I mean, that's pretty much the full setup that you'll need for your not comma eight by not comma eight. Um, obviously, once you get these, it's only the beginning. You have to, still have to go through quite a journey. But yeah, we we do get lost, asked quite a lot what uh, what you might need. So hopefully this helped you um, guide you in the right direction, no matter what country you are. And as always, please make sure to like support our like and support our channel. Uh, a lot of this stuff we do for free because YouTube won't let us monetize, uh, obviously due to the nature of the education we're sharing. Um, so yeah, any support really, really does help. And obviously check out some of the links below that does help, help our channel quite a lot. And yeah, uh, thanks so much guys, till next week. Peace. <laughs>